length, the 18280, 18-ton 18 gross vehicle mass, 280 horsepower. It's got the single sleeper, um, uh, what we call L cab. So if you have a look at the uh, at the design of that cab, you can basically use it as a sleeper cab. It's got very very nice sleeper technology in there. And if you look at the basic refinement of the cab, this is typically what you would find in heavy over 16 ton vehicles as uh, as the cab technology. And the very modern grill, very modern. Um, uh, let's say ergonomics when you when you look at it that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Walking around the vehicle, um, we other than the cab comforts that you have, you've got a seven and a half ton front axle. You can see we've got a slightly more robust chassis, which has been pre-prepared for certain uh, body mountings. We've got an eleven and a half ton back axle, so that's where the combination of eleven and a half ton back axle, seven and a half ton front axle gives us a gross vehicle mass of eighteen tons. So the DNA relative to other vehicles in its class has got a two ton on average better uh, payload capacity. This particular vehicle is fitted with a, with a manual um, uh, a nine speed gearbox. What we do have is, is we offer a 12 speed Tipmatic gearbox as well, which is normally uh, linked to Trucknology. We normally marry the and technology uh, a little bit more about that. Technology is a concept unique to MIN. It's a, it's a it's a registered trademark for MIN. And technology is essentially when you take the mechanics of any vehicle to its optimum, and you want to optimize it further, you've got to bring in smart electronics. So the marriage of smart mechanics and smart electronics equals technology. It really gives you um, optimum TCO over a longer period of time, saving you time and money. Most definitely. Putting you first. <laughs> so just coming into the cab, we try and optimize the uh, uh, value for money aspect with production costs. So we've got a good supply arrangement with Goodyear. And for that reason, they have offered us a, uh, uh, as a main deal. supplier to the mid-range TG products. Absolutely. Of course, we offer tires like Continental, Bridge tires. So whatever you want, and there you can get as on. As well, whatever the customer wants, we can. Uh, what, what do you find is the most popular choice? It really differs from operation it's to operation. operationally based. So as, as you know, Greg, the, um, the, um, uh, the demand for transport solutions is, is, is one which is, which is a pull effect. So customers want to do a specific job with the truck and then we basically specify the tires which last appropriately and that give him the right CPK. And driver satisfaction driving this thing looks really comfortable. Is that a sunroof yes. there at the top? Greg, I'd like you to, to get up into, yes, into, into the vehicle. I'll come around uh, to the other side. There we go. And what you can see here is, is if you have a look at this compared to any vehicle in its weight class, this yeah. is really the creme de la creme, the premium of premium cab uh, technology for a mid-size vehicle. Decent size uh, tray at the back is uh, Most better definitely. Back. Very, very comfortable sleeping technology for when the... Uh, but it's still solidly made, you know. Solid. And, and this is a, a product which is built in our Steyr factory in Austria. Yeah. Um, we bring in the CKD from there and then we, we assemble it locally in our Pine Town operation. So a very refined product. And in essence, when we have a look at the... At the uh, the total package that you get here with the DNA that you can see as well as under the skin, you're looking at around 500,000 Rand more inherent DNA in the product compared to, let's say, a Japanese equivalent product. Absolutely. And a lot of it's under the skin. Absolutely right. So the types of things that we would have from a cab technology point of view, the types of things that we, that we have in a vehicle like this, it's a full sleeper, of course. Yeah. So the, the, the bed can go down and you can have a a two meter tall guy, driver, a big driver, using that as a sleeping So Bucky's could drive, there's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the, um, uh, under the under the bench, there's obviously some nice stowage compartments as well, where drivers can neatly stow whatever they need for the long You don't often see a, a fold down bed, this is really a sort of class leading, so to speak. This is, uh, this is really nice, so what people sometimes do with distribution vehicles, they remove the actual bed and they put in two bench seats, so it becomes a, a small crew cab as well. Yeah. And there's some very nice designs that can be, that can be customized for that too. And, and the sunroof, how, how does that work? Sunroof, uh, in essence, very, very easy, manually operated that way. Less and, to, uh, not much to go wrong there. And uh, a very simple design, yeah. very, very durable design. Absolutely. It must be nice driving along, getting a bit of natural air in as well. 
of course a vehicle like this as you can see uh, an inter full integrated uh, climate control system so air conditioning comes standard with this particular vehicle we can also see the high quality seats both driver seat full air spring seat bucket as seats. well as the co-driver seat so very very comfortable from that point of view when we come to TG this is the most basic of the steerings that we have in the TG yeah. range normally what we do is we specify the so-called uh, multifunctional steering wheel where all of your uh, toggle switches can be controlled from the steering wheel in this particular case we've opted for the manual transmission as well as the very standard uh, um, steering wheel. built for Africa so so <laughs> it's really for this one was brought, bought for a specific customer yeah. who wanted us to specify a little bit more basically when we talk the TGM range in either the 18 ton or the 25 ton 6x2 we normally have the multifunctional steering yeah. wheel and the automated manual shift gearbox or what we call Tipmatic gearbox. Who would be a typical client for this truck? All distribution companies so you could distribution companies could typically be the rental companies as we know them or then what we would say the ancillary operators butchers, bakers, candlestick bakers <laughs> that are not in transport for their primary uh, yeah. business and they would need to have a, a load body fitted to it to give you somewhere around uh, 8 to 10 tons payload, net payload. Under the skin, what, what sort of power plant are we dealing with here? We're talking about the DO8 uh, Euro 3 280 horsepower common rail engine. Um, uh, its torque characteristics at 1100 newton meters of torque at, at, a, at a very low rev range makes it a very, very fuel efficient uh, uh, power pack engine plant. Married then to what would be a Tipmatic gearbox, we are able to, with the electronic control, have uh, what we would call the Brakematic system, which uh, which allows you to then operate outside of just your foundation brakes with the with the engine valve brake and so on with the vehicle. So it gives you the driveline durability. And the fuel economy, manual versus auto? Um, what we have found is, is that because of the, the technology of Brakematic and Tipmatic, you actually find that your your Tipmatic solution gives uh, makes an average driver a good driver. So what we're actually finding is is that the guys on average are getting three percent better fuel consumption with the Tipmatic version than with the manual version. And obviously, your driver training helps out there as well. Hundred percent right. That's in the driver training. We've got specialized programs which cover manual gearboxes. Uh, um, uh, splitter gearboxes as well as the Tipmatic. And, and which which ones do the chaps and ladies prefer? Um, what we find is that the drivers really like the Tipmatic gearboxes to drive. However, that does come at a premium in terms of the upfront DNA cost yeah. of the vehicle. So if you compare the the uh, the cost of a Tipmatic gearbox in a technology generation product versus a CLA or a VW, you're looking at a 50,000 Rand on cost for the Tipmatic. But uh, presumably there's no clutch involved. Then there's no clutch pedal. This particular one is manual shift where we where we do have a clutch pedal and then it operates normally uh, in this case uh, 12, 12 speed high low we, we have the uh, we have a splitter in this particular one here um, which gives us uh, eight uh, forward gears plus a crawler gear you can from the comfort of your seat you can switch the vehicle on and you can basically run through a diagnostic where the computer will check are your lights functioning yeah. properly instead of doing the manual walk around yeah. and uh, uh, things like central locking and electric windows all add to the DNA of the comforts of the vehicle But of course when you take that in terms of Rand value that makes this particular cab about a hundred thousand Rand more expensive than the And telematics obviously is in involved as well Telematics absolutely every one of our vehicles are fitted with a uh, MAN telematics SA system X works So firstly that's first purpose is for security so we can man manage the security of the vehicle from production plant to storage plant but if then the the the, the hardware is uh, so configured that we can then tap into it and we can give a full telematic solution which includes service care advising customers yeah. when the vehicle is due for servicing by sms and by uh, by email and then it can give you a full fleet management solution as well where we can give a full driver scorecard as to how the vehicle and driver is performing by remote control and i guess you put rewards like some companies would reward drivers most good. definitely it's really commonplace that customers are rewarding drivers particularly for the things that we spoke this morning that are, are, are the winners for us in in the truck test payload productivity uh, turnaround time and then of course fuel efficiency and now uh, our oh, VW. 
How long have VW been making trucks for? Um, VW Latin America, VW trucks, buses Latin America have been around a very long time. Um, from a South African perspective, uh, we started to bring the VW Constellation truck range as well as the Forks bus range from 2006 onwards. So in the South African operation, Constellation and Forks bus have been going for just more than 10 years. It certainly is not quite in the same league as a technology generation product. Yeah. However, if you compare this to the Japanese equivalents in the marketplace, I'd like you to, Let's have, a look. to have your opinion. <laughs> There we go. Right, so we have the Volkswagen Constellation. As you can see, it has also got the single sleeper bunk. But at face value, you can see that the technology generation is one step or one grade higher than what we would call what the, the, the center of the budget segment. Whilst the design of this cab is still modern and rock solid, it typically gives you a European look and feel and when you compare it then to your Japanese equivalents it's definitely at a premium. Yeah. Like with the TG, some of the elements of the TG in terms of the, the onboard diagnostics and the electronics are prevalent. So you have a basic menu over here where you can uh, look at things like average fuel consumption, you can look at, uh, at, at uh, like we have on, the, on passenger cars, um, how we are doing across a certain trip and then it also has things like speed control. So if we look at the buttons here, speed control of your engine, setting it at a certain pace, and if you're then on the open road, longer distance, you can go up or down by means of the toggle switch here. It's cr cruise control. So cruise control feature is there. there it also has an, uh, an engine valve brake, so it has an ancillary braking system, uh, which uh, it saves your brake life. So you don't have to use your foundation brakes to that extent. Exactly. But very nice layout also with a radio tachograph as standard. Very nice stowage compartments and a good all-round vision that you have with this. The first thing product. that springs to mind is space. Very, very spacious cab. Spacious cab. And uh, for, a, for a distribution vehicle like the TG, very, very nicely apportioned and uh, and uh, it gives added value to a customer that wants a little bit more from the operator workstation. Absolutely. Interesting to the VW range is, is that we run with uh, uh, Cummins engines uh, on this range and this is matched to a, uh, an Eaton gearbox and what we have here is, is we have a six-speed uh, gearbox with a splitter. Um, now the, the, the gearbox is not split, we actually have a split diff, your, yeah. your ratio split is in, in the rear axle and uh, it's a very very nice uh, um, uh, bit of technology in terms of being able to split the gears and I think when you, when you physically drive the truck as well you'll be able to get that experience first hand. And Cummins has got bulletproof reputation? Cummins is, is very well known in the South African environment, it's, uh, it's uh, this Cummins Meritor um, uh, uh, Eaton combination, Cummins Fuller Rockwell combination is very well known in South Africa, it's got a strong following. So with the VW product range we give, we give the customer uh, a different package of DNA compared to our technology generation of vehicles. Absolutely. And we have a little sunroof here as well. Also sunroof, this one can operate uh, in, in three ways. So. That way, or that way, or then totally closed as well. Yeah. That's, a, that's almost like a throwback to the 1970s with W Foxy bus with the, with the bay windows you could open <laughs> up at the front. <laughs> very, very popular truck in Latin America. The Brazilian road conditions are absolutely horrible. Yeah. Many of them unpaved roads. And both Constellation and Forks bus has really stood the test of time in those harsh operating conditions. You know, a truck can do as well if it handles those. Absolutely those right. Amazon forest in winter. <laughs> so, like like with the technology generation product, that distribution vehicle was also then a distribution vehicle that uh, that we put into similar operations in South Africa. We find that fast freight as well as farmers love this particular vehicle. Um, like do the, the the owner driver farmers like the TG product they are uh, guys that uh, that love the VW product in the agricultural and in community. terms of shared gene uh, uh, 
shared, uh, shared um, technology between the various trucks, chassis, uh, much of that? With, uh, with us having the same group ownership, what we will see in future is, is that we will replace the Cummins engine with the MAN engines yeah. going forward, which makes a logical sense. So we'll go with the, uh, with the Euro 5 MAN D08 engines with the Constellation range. Euro 5, is, is, do you think the fuel is going to hold up? What, uh, what's what we as MAN are very fortunate with is, is that the Euro 5 uh, engine technology uses Euro 2 base engine uh, technology with after treatment and uh, we've proven that uh, that particular engine is very durable even with very high sulfur content. So that's how you're able to beat the competition. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mean, we we're very happy with that, and we've uh, we've been running Euro Five for quite some time in both truck and bus operations to selected customers. Yeah. Not all customers want the Euro Five technology; they prefer Euro Two or Euro Three technology. However, we'll probably be ahead of the legal implementation deadline of 2020 for Euro Five. We'll start now phasing in the Euro Five products. So you're way ahead of the game. Most of the Japanese players are still on Euro Three. We will be ahead of the game there and we're quite happy with that. I think if we've got the engine technology that can uh, that can do well with current local operating conditions, why not? Let's give the customers that benefit. Exactly. A few apparent differences between the 18 to 80, 18 tons, 280 horsepower. Very clearly when we have a look at the Constellation, 17 to 50, one ton less, so yeah. 17 tons. So it in essence has one ton less uh, design capability. Is this the 8 litre Cummins in here? This is the this is the Cummins engine that yeah. we fit here with 250 horsepower. It's a common rail engine yeah. like the D08 on the 280 uh, and cubic, horsepower. How, how, in terms of size? Uh, we're looking at the, at the, as the industry norm is, we're looking at a 6.9 litre engine. So that's just that's good power to weight ratio for the size truck. Very, very much so. The, the, the torque characteristics of the 250 horsepower engine in this particular operation is superb. You could go through a brick wall in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, also quite a durable chassis. We've got a 6 point, uh, we've got a 7.1 ton front, front axle with a 10.5 rear axle. Hence the reason why it's a slightly lower capacity unit than the TGM 18280. Um, however, in its class, if you compare it with the Japanese products, you're, you're looking at a product that comes at a premium compared to what the Japanese and Asian offerings are. What we, what we generally say is, is when people want to buy a TG product, a technology generation product, it's actually a 10-year investment. Yeah. So you can actually amortize your costs over a 10-year period, your service intervals on a TG are longer because of the all, all of the the engine management and things that we come that we have standard there. When we have a look at the VW, it's uh, we've got to cut back slightly on the service intervals for the DNA that we have in the product. There's less electronics on the How many vehicle. Ks would the service intervals so be? When you would run 30,000 Ks on the TG product, you would run 25,000 Ks on the uh, on the Volkswagen product. So typically where that is a 10 year investment, this would be an 8 year investment. And when we go to CLA, this has got a first economic life of five years. How many Ks would you expect to get out of these trucks? So, in essence, I mean, we've got many customers that have done over a million Ks. However, we believe that in a distribution cycle, you're normally running around 5,000 kilometers uh, per, per month on average, which is 60,000 a year, which is 300,000 in a five-year cycle. So three to 500,000, you have to get as a bare minimum entry-level yeah. requirement, life first life. Uh, the engine's hardly broken in, in, in at that stage. <laughs> no, I think, and, and this is where, where the MAN, I mean, MAN is the home uh, of, of, of engine development. Rudolf Diesel, the inventor of the diesel engine, yeah. that's an MAN patent. And, uh, and uh, we've gone from strength to strength when it comes to engine development over the years. So when it comes to MAN pedigree in engines, we really have very, very sweet spot, economically efficient, reliable engine technology. Okay, that is obviously your key differentiator between you and the competition, or one of the key differentiators. Well, it's one of the key differentiators. I mean, MAN, we like to perceive ourselves as a, as a premium brand. Out of necessity, though, the market calls for three different classes of product, super premium, premium or high budget, and then entry level, uh, which is budget products. And the CLA, which I'd like to walk you through now, is what we would say our solution to the budget segment. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see it definitely looks different. So, CLA, cargo line A. 
This is a product which we which we define as German engineering made in India. Yeah. This particular product's predecessors were the L and M2000 products, and it has certain components from the F2000 range, which is very well known to, to South Africans. Um, the product was born in our Steyr factory, like the TGM product is today, the TGL and TGM product coming from Steyr. And in 2006, we opted to take that tooling of the L and M2000 to our uh, partner in India, MAN Force Trucks and uh, where we formed the joint venture with them in 2006 to build the MAN product under license. It has uh, evolved over the period over the last 10 years where we've included some of the heavier duty technology generation components under the skin. So when we have a look at certain chassis components, certain suspension components and certain um, uh, of the drivetrain components, we've brought in some basic technology type of things without the electronics so a very basic cab the cab as you see it from an internal point of view also got very nice stowage areas compared to the Japanese equivalents good all-round vision but as you can see it's a very basic in terms of its overall dials the layout of the vehicle and the layout of the instrumentation cluster very very, very to, basic but very easy to see everything 100% correct so what, what we have said is that before we go for the premium DNA of a Constellation cab or a, uh, or a Tracknology cab, which is, as mentioned, roughly 100,000 from step to step more expensive, what many customers want in the distribution sector as butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, they yeah. don't want to, to, to be professional hauliers. It's a necessary evil for them, very often a grudge purchase. Exactly. So they really look at the principal value of the vehicle. And for that reason, when we have a look at the basic design of the CLA, it is functional. It gives you all of the basic requirements that you need for that particular segment. With an air sprung seat, quite comfortable. It's got a, a, a nice co-driver seat and it's also got a, a, a jump bench seat for a, for a third uh, um, person that is on board. However, as you can see with the functionality and the type of finish that we have internally, very, very easy to wipe down, yeah. keep clean and very, very functional from that exactly. point. Exactly, and you've got plenty of storage space here. So nice, clean, sort of a very clean lines. nice, clean, very basic. And of course, there's a lot of customers that are, are buying these eight ton net payload vehicles for, for their particular business. You're getting the man name with at a good price. And yeah, you get the man pedigree, <laughs> yeah. you get the MAN DNA. MAN, it's, I beg it's your pardon. built in, a, in, a, in, in, the, in, in our now fully owned MAN factory in Pithampur. Very interesting. The lowest uh, qualification that we have in the in the production line in India is graduate mechanical engineer so all of the guys working on our line in India are mechanical engineers or upward highly skilled and uh, and and also quite a young workforce so what you would see here is is if you have a look at this product as you see it today here compared to how it came out of our Steyr factory there would be no difference yeah we bring CKDs to South Africa and we then assemble it in South Africa at Pine Town and of course, anything that is needed that we've learned that needs to be reinforced further for South African or Southern African operating conditions, we make sure it gets done in the so factory. What are the typical mods you're going to have for South Africa? So typically what you find is, is that these vehicles very often operated on, operate on unpaved roads and uh, in an environment where you've got corrugations on your roads. So as a result, very high vibration. So we've learned over the years that certain brackets rattle loose. We've, if you take your radiator cradle, for example, if you look at your stone guard in front of the radiator, those are all things that you've got to reinforce that they can stay the test of time. Those are things that we would do locally. The reinforcement of the clamping around certain hoses and so on, we make sure that are done properly. And then if you look at the air intake system of this particular vehicle, you can see that it's very, very robust in terms of harsh African operating conditions. Absolutely. And once again, a lovely sunroof for the gentleman. Lovely sunroof, <laughs> two, two settings on it, very easy to operate and uh, very functional. And you are mentioning earlier about your assembly plant, they're carbon neutral, that must be really proud for you. Very proud. Full photovoltaic uh, solar panels on the full roof of that assembly plant. We are totally free from the grid. We actually put some power back into the grid, which in a South African context is nice to do. But we're very proud of the enviro-friendly nature of that particular plant. And 
all three of the products that uh, that we see here are coming down that production line so we have a very r wide model selection with in essence three different DNA pedigrees of product uh, that we complete in our plant time facility and you also have a big on skills development putting back into into your employ in your employment most definitely I mean we we if you take our production plant environment we we comply with the VW exacting production standards for for basic skills development love to take you there Greg you must come and see the, the place and we'd like to take you through that that Academy that that school that we put our production workers through it's not only about the hard skills in terms of manufacturing um, it's also about the soft skills and the adult development that is required by our by our workforce so I've got a very nice stable workforce down in Pine Town as well on average 15 years plus service to the company Absolutely, and your financing department uh, always always coming through for the for the customers. Most definitely. I mean, our most recent offering is is that you, should you want to buy any one of the products that you've seen here in the next two months, MAN Financial Services will gladly finance you, and uh, the rate is dependent on your credit standing, of course. But of course, uh, what we would do is is um, we would offer you a six month payment holiday. Buy now, make your first <laughs> payment in 2018, so you can own money with the vehicle for six months before having the burden of the financial monthly payment. And tough economic times, uh, second hand parts uh, and vehicle uh, departments growing? Greg, we, we, we really are conscious of that. It's tough for our operators, it's tough for our economy. We're doing a lot of things in order to support our customers out there. Um, one of the things for those operators that cannot afford to replace their existing fleet, we've got a specific program called the Senior Truck Card which takes care, care of uh, of uh, our old timer trucks where we are offering discounted parts and service for those particular operators we're offering on the part side a echo trade for with an up to 25 percent discount if you bring your old parts and you fit the new ones the new ma engineering parts in our workshop and then added to that we give you those parts we, we cover it with a two-year warranty so we're doing our little bit to try and help our customers in tough times i've mentioned the finance packages of course we've got a full range of extended warranties and R&M packet packages to take the risk out of whatever the variable cost impact could be on on the business for our customers and may, may, may I showing growth of late are your outlook for the rest of the year coming into 2018 Greg we, we we're very proud and we're very thankful as well for the support of our customers year on year our volumes trucks and buses are up 18% we've improved our market share by one and a half percent in in a declining market and uh, we, uh, we, we, we really are having a good run at the moment. We've got a very healthy order backlog and uh, it should uh, equate to a growth of some 300 units or 20% for MAN year on year compared to 2016. Very thankful for that. The team is upbeat. Customers are upbeat about our market offerings and, uh, and they are rewarding us with their orders. And the benefits of being under the prestigious VW banner? VW, what a phenomenal group of companies. It's a mega group. We one of the 12 brands uh, as MAN truck and bus. Volkswagen truck and bus is, is a secondary brand. And uh, with having a big daddy of that size, uh, we can certainly be very flexible in a number of different ways to our, for our customers. Absolutely. And, and making sure that the different brands don't step on each other's toes. As, uh, as you can see here yeah, from a, from a uh, uh, in a very small way in a South African operation for group offerings, I've shown you here yeah, three products which actually fit directly into the distribution segment. Uh, but by walking through the DNA, you can see that we can offer our customers three different pedigrees of product out of the same stable with the same uh, back backing. Um, however at three totally different price classes and uh, for those customers that want a 10-year uh, TCO solution TG is the answer for those of one that want an eight-year solution VW is the answer and the ones that want a five-year solution CLA is the answer so this way we make sure that there's no cannibalization of products and so too when we have a look at the different brands in in the stable of the VW group we make sure that we have a one plus one equals three scenario where where you where you try and make sure that you have a multitude of products fit for purpose for different customers absolutely well let's see how they drive yeah this is an option that we have where we make a shorter wheelbase typically three and a half meter wheelbase and we can put onto it then a six meter uh, six cubic meter tipper and this is an, an ideal hardware support uh, vehicle uh, a, a small construction industry tipper uh, on-road tipper and then also used for the smaller 
Um, road renovations, road building type of, uh, of application. Construction mining. To the left of it you can see a bear chassis. That's the 6x4 version with the double diff. So it's got the heavy duty uh, rear axles. And uh, we would typically take then and put a, a 10 cubic meter mini rock damper or, or a sand tipper on that for for yep. let's say a, a light construction work. When you're doing the Dakar six six wheeler eight wheeler, when we when we go for those, then what we would do is is in 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 that it's typically a four by four vehicle or a six by six vehicle with quite considerable modifications for yeah. it for those high speed off road operating conditions. <laughs> Absolutely. And it ain't governed to 80, I'm sure. <laughs> um, right next to the 15 to 20, we've got another 26 to 80, which has got a 6 cubic meter Putzmeister concrete mixer drum on the back. So typical for the ready mix concrete uh, business. And next to that there, we've got a platform truck, typical for municipal operations. Crew cab, yeah. Um, so we've got some space to, to handle the crew and the maintenance. So you're coming for the municipal market with this truck? Absolutely right. So, I mean, we, we supplied uh, in 2015 and 2016 a considerable number of products into that, uh, into that business. Okay, so we're in the new CLA. So we pop it into neutral. Are we in neutral here? Yeah, you're in neutral at the so moment. Yeah, It's 
got a common rail engine, um, so that uh, goes a long way to making sure that the combustion is, is done efficiently. Um, and then, yeah, if the driver applies a um, conservative approach, then you can definitely get good results. And sort of cruising highway speed on, the, on, this, on this vehicle? Oh, you get up to 80 k's an hour and it's, it, it manages that quite nicely. With the load on hills, you'll probably drop down in speed, but... So um, you only do 80 on this, on this track. You say you're going like to over Cape Town. It's 
it's just an improvement on the existing exhaust, exhaust brake. CLA as such. Um, I think there were a few small adjustments to um, to the new phase, which which helped. But I mean, it's you know, aerodynamics. You you generally don't get much um, improved performance at low speed, um, and uh, and with smaller frontal areas. So with a, a long haul vehicle, yeah. you're normally operating at the maximum 4.3 meters, 2.6 meters wide. Yeah. Um, you know, there your frontal area is quite large and aerodynamics count if you're maintaining speeds above 80. But in a construction application, it's seldom going to do that. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's Big steering wheel does the business. Easy to see dials. I was singing the Uni Trucks praise yesterday, now I'm gonna have to sing this one's praise today. There's <laughs> many top products uh, coming into the market these days. No, I think these days you don't get a bad product, and that's why it's hard to, to, to when I get if I get questions about uh, how it compares with the competitors, I think. Of the day the competitors don't have a bad vehicle either yeah. uh, I do think value for money and total cost of ownership you're getting a great deal here with this oh sorry I'm just below your uh, so you, you see you see that, that um Switch there. Oh, that, that metal thing. Yeah, that so you metal button. Put your foot on that. Yeah. Can we reverse here? Um, so. Reverse, you just gotta kind of knock it, um, you gotta give it a bit of a. You got clutch in? Yeah, and clutch is in, and then we take it back a bit. Yeah. Straight into here. I wouldn't mind getting my code 14 one of these days. Oh, this is like driving. Driving Dave's Jetta. Easy peasy. <laughs> It's like you couldn't get enough, eh? So why do they why do they call you the Stig? <laughs> oh no, uh, long story I guess, but it started off when we did the Efficient Line Tour uh, back in 2012, where uh, I dressed up as uh, a Stig lookalike. <laughs> this white outfit and a helmet, and and then I think we eventually made a reveal about, um, I think it was about uh, two months after the event, and uh, revealed me at, a, at, a, at an event. Yeah. <laughs> So it's got nothing to do with the driving style. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't call myself a best driver, but, uh, but yeah, I think the name just stuck. Yeah, so the seat's also quite straightforward. I mean, you can adjust the uh, the angle of the backrest, okay? You can adjust, um, this is basically the, uh, the, the easy uh, entry. So you just drop the seat down to get in and out. Um, you can adjust the height, okay? Air suspension on your seat. Yeah, it's, it's uh, <laughs> air suspended seat. It's got uh, you can adjust the dampening. There's three basically three settings of hardness. Yeah. So if you're on the open road, for example, you want it soft. Stiff, yeah. But on a on a bumpy roads, you'd want it to be a bit stiff. So you're not bouncing around the whole shop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then obviously you can adjust the the angle of the base, the four and a half position. So it's most of what you get in a modern. And build quality of this compared to the competition? Oh, it's, uh, I mean, it it really is. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely uh, done, or I mean, it looks, if I compare it to the, the competition, I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely got a very good build quality. Yeah, Absolutely. You really can't, uh, you can't fault it from that point of view. It's reliable, it's rugged, it's all you need. Um, yeah. Sounds like most uh, good South Africans. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's what you want. You want these trucks to... To, to, to last and um, you want to minimize downtime yeah um, so the fewer things that can go wrong the better and I mean this truck has it's been around now in South Africa for 10 years and it's, it's proven itself what's the highest miles you've seen on one of these guys oh, that's a 
good question. I'm not, uh, I can't quite recall it. Normally these vehicles are, are also used um, in, uh, in, in you, you wouldn't look maybe at the hours, you'd look, I mean, at the distance. You'd you look, look at, at the hours, hours, yeah, in the construction, mining setting. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, there, I mean, it can, can do quite a, quite, a, quite a few hours. I mean, at the moment we've got a standard warranty on these vehicles, three years, uh, 300,000 kilometers. Um, so the engine's just broken in after 300,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, these vehicles can keep going on. Yeah, get a million, million out of these. Yeah, I'll say so. But yeah, I guess it depends on the application. And the driver. <laughs> and the driver, exactly. <laughs> but there's very little that the driver can do wrong here. That's what's quite nice about and it. And if you start over revving, will it, did it cut the revs down? I mean, if, if the guy's changing too late, will it have a, like a, a rev limit? At, so you're not uh, over revving the truck um there, there is a, a rev limiter built in so i mean if i put my foot down right now with uh with it in neutral it will rev up i think it goes up to about uh, 2200 or 2400 and then it's uh it won't it won't allow the cars to over rev exactly um but uh, then it, it, it's also it's got the the one switch in there with the up and down arrows so when it is in neutral and you want to pick up the revs a bit particularly when it comes to pto operation yeah then you can adjust the, the engine speed as well. Now we're going to test the obstacle course track out on for size. Okay, so we... Yeah, that's can, first gear, yeah? Yeah, you can start off in second as well. It's unladen, so... Makes okay, it let's see what second gear is like on this platform. Yeah, you're gonna go left. Okay, so just down for sound. So I guess in a mining situation it's all about mobility. Tight spaces. And then we flick it over there. Yeah, you can try that exhaust brake. This guy, yeah.
Look. It's more system than the person's head. <laughs> idea of using their foot on the brake so um, a lot of drivers who drive the, the older vehicles they're used to it um, I mean, because it only has an exhaust brake there's no stages uh, it's either on or off yeah um, if it had a, a retarder or so then it would make more sense to keep it in on a stalk switch yeah but there's no stages so it's brake pedal and um, it brings in the exhaust brake as well now okay. uh, the only thing is you, you, you can't tell uh, what proportion is on the foundation and what is on the exhaust exactly. so does anybody press both at the same time yeah it's not necessary yeah it's not necessary to do that but um, you know the, the advantage is it still saves brakes yeah um, the, uh, the disadvantage is that yeah you, you're still using the brakes so you you will still have a certain amount of wear because if you use that that other pedal then you know you're Sometimes only on the exhaust. I just use that permanently because I never really use the brake. So on the CLA, made in India, how do you maintain the high standards with, with, while still being very competitive with your competition? MI in truck and bus a few years ago bought a 50% stake of an Indian concern called Force Motors. Um, we have recently uh, invested fully uh, by buying out the shares of that particular company. So it's a fully fledged MIN production facility in India. We have German management uh, at the helm of that particular company. And within the Indian production environment, our minimum skills level is mechanic, graduate mechanical engineer. Um, it is also one where we really like to take members of the media and our uh, staff to uh, uh, staff dealers to, to the facility. Why? When you have a look at that particular facility in India, it is state of the art. And it is also one where we, where we really can offer um, a, a world-class production facility. I mean, you can eat off the floors literally in terms of our, our, our production facility, in terms of housekeeping. And if you look at the tooling and the manufacturing that goes into the aggregates that come into a CLA product, it is world-class. It's like you would find in any one of the state-of-art manufacturing facilities in the world. Coming to South Africa, of course, we bring CKD to South Africa because of import duty structures. So there would be normally be for CBU a 20% import duty from India. We save that by building it locally in the, in the South African uh, assembly environment. And like our TG and VW products, we basically then optimize 
for South African, Southern African operating conditions, that particular uh, assembly pedigree, production pedigree. Um, we have uh, benchmarked this particular product a number of times now against its equivalents in the market, Japanese Asian products. And we are very, very happy that what the CLA has to offer our customers out there is equivalent, if not better, to the Japanese product. And guess what? Somewhere between 8 and 10% cheaper than the Japanese equivalents. Absolutely. And then oh, you get them on fuel economy as well. Well, clearly the DO8 engine is, is in here. So we've got a Euro 2 DO8 uh, mechanical uh, injection system uh, um, engine in this. These engines will evolve to common rail as well, like our other uh, DO8 engines. For the time being, we go with Euro 2 mechanical injection. Again, looks to the principal value of the vehicle to keep the principal cost of the vehicle as low as possible. The benefit then is principal value as low as possible to our customers. And in terms of uh, uh, the, the South African manufacturing assembly scene, are any plans for to increase that in the, in the coming years? It's an ongoing drive for us. I mean, we're really in the hands of our customers here. We, we certainly have expansion capability already. Um, in the tough economic context of Southern Africa at the moment, volumes are subdued. Of course, we want to have a bigger slice of, uh, let's say, a small market. But as the markets then probably recover again, we are really geared to, to offer the products and the capacity needed to fulfill that. You've got to be ready for the good times. Absolutely right. Absolutely. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Do you get many uh, lady drivers these days on, on the highways and byways of South Africa? Very, very much so. We've got two of our customers which jump to mind immediately, which uh, have done a great job in this. Um, Barlow World Manline have started to recruit uh, uh, specifically a number of, uh, of lady drivers to their team. And Cecil, the, the fuel, the fuel uh, coal to liquids, fuel manufacturer, transporter, is another one that is... Uh, that has gone contentious gone issue do they make better drivers um, in fact uh, <laughs> I think the whole industry was very very pleasantly surprised as to how well the ladies take to the to the job very yeah. diligent very meticulous yeah. in, in and take the job very serious very less speeding as well yeah. <laughs> very very and and I mean they really return a very good fuel consumption and safety record.